Hey guys, welcome back to the FE exam review series where I cover the most common FE problems you need to know to pass your FE exam. In today's video, we'll be covering the engineering economics section problem, specifically under part A, time value of money using the effective interest rate. So let's dive in. Oh yeah, Okay guys, so you deposit $1,500 quarterly from your salary into an investment account that pays an interest rate of 6% per year, and it is compounded monthly. In seven years, how much will you have in your account? So looking at this question here, so we're trying to find the future value, right? Because we want to know what's the total amount that we will have in our account seven years from now, right? So it's a value that's happening seven years from now so that's going to be a future value so that's what we're trying to look for now let's take a look at what's giving to us okay let's try to identify what the values that they give they give us in this question so let's first take a look at the one thousand five hundred dollars what is that is that single amount or uniform series amount well let me go over the difference between those two. So single amount is usually an amount that happens only once, right? Like for example, present value or future value, those are single amounts. Uniform series, on the other hand, is an amount, a deposit or withdrawal that happens, the same amount that happens every month or every quarter or every year, okay? So that's uniform series. So here, because we deposit $1,500 every quarter, this is going to be A, okay? So A is $1,500, okay? Now, we are also giving the payment period, okay? So this here, so let me write here, payment period is quarterly, okay? So the payment period is the length of time between each cash flow, okay? So which means every quarter, we deposit $1,500, okay? Now, the interest period, so interest period, let's just call it IP, is the interest, is the period of the interest rate. And in this problem, it's yearly, right? We have an interest rate of 6% per year, okay? So it's going to be year. And CP, which is the compounding period, is monthly, okay? Now, what we need to do before we can set up the future value equation and start plugging the, the, the I percent and the N, we need to find I percent, right? We need to find the effective interest rate, okay? Because we have the interest rates that is per year, but then we have the payment period is quarterly and we have the compounding period, which is monthly, okay? So we have to find the effective interest rates. Now, the first question we got to ask ourselves is, what would be the specified time period for the effective interest rate? Well, when we are dealing with uniform series, remember this guys, the effective interest rate has to always be per the payment period, okay? So let me, let me write that down. So I has to always be per the payment period, okay? So when we are dealing with the uniform series. So which means in this problem, we need to find the effective interest rate, right? Per quarter. Okay, and to do that, you have to use the equation that's on the reference handbook. So let's go to the reference handbook and take a look at the equation. Now, if we go to the reference handbook and their engineering economics section, here we have the equation for the effective interest rate. But you might look at it and be like, what is R, what is M, right? And that's where our cheat sheet comes in handy. So if you haven't downloaded this cheat sheet, make sure that you guys do. I will leave the link above here. It has really important equations and concepts that you need to know for your FE exam. So if you take a look at this here, what I did, I tried to identify or define each of these terms. So go ahead and you read this, use it, try to use these definitions to solve for this problem. Now, before you go ahead and pause this video, one more thing I would say is that when you're setting up the future value equation, we said that the effective interest rate, so the I percent has to be per quarter, but then N also has to be per quarter, okay? So with that information, why don't you guys give this problem a try and I will see you in a little bit. If you guys find this problem helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you want more FE problems, go ahead and comment below FE problems. Okay guys, so this is the equation that we're gonna use to find the future value. So we're gonna do F is equal to A, which is the uniform series, and then times this symbol, okay? So it's F over A, I percent and N. Now this symbol here, you can actually 
grab it from the reference handbook on the first page of engineer economics. So in this table here, you have converts to F, right? And we are giving A. We're trying to find F and we are giving A and this is the symbol that we're going to use, okay? Now, the next thing we need to do is find the effective interest rate and N. Let's first find the effective interest rate. So as we said earlier, we're going to use this equation. And also, if you guys remember, we're going to find the effective interest rate per the payment period, which means per quarter. OK, now let's first find R. So if you guys remember, R is the nominal interest rate that has the same period as the effective interest rate, right? We, which means that we got to convert the interest rate into quarterly right now it's yearly but we need to convert it into quarterly okay so if you guys remember these definitions that we discussed earlier what we basically need to do is convert every term into quarters okay so for r where we're going to have here is six percent per year and we just want to find what is that percentage in quarters okay so how many quarters do we have per year we have four right so if we do six percent and we divide it by four quarters per year, that's going to give us 1.5% per quarter, okay? So this is basically just saying that 6% per year is the same as saying we have 1.5% per quarter, okay? Now let's take a look at M. So for M, it's the compounding period, right? It's giving to us monthly and we need to convert it into quarters. So we need to ask ourselves, how many months do we have in a quarter? right? We have three months. So that's what M is going to be. Okay. Now let's just plug in the numbers into this equation and then solve for I. So we're going to do one plus and then R. So make sure that you guys, when you plug in R in this equation, make sure you divide it by hundred. Okay. So we're going to use 0 0.015 and then we're going to divide it by M, which we said it's three then we're going to raise it to the power of three minus one. Then you're going to multiply this whole answer by hundred so that you can, you can get a percentage. Okay. And if you guys do that, you're going to get 1.51% and this is again per quarter, right? So that's the effective interest rate. Now let's take a look at N. Okay. So N we're trying to find the future value, right? in seven years from now, right? But every term in this equation right now is in quarter, which means we have to convert this into quarters as well. And so the way to do that is actually pretty simple. Again, we just ask ourselves, how many quarters do we have in one year, right? We have four quarters. And if we multiply that by seven years, that's gonna give us N in terms of quarters, okay? So let me write that down just so you guys can see it. So we have seven years, right? And then we're gonna multiply it by four quarters per year, right? And so seven times four, that's gonna give us 28. So this is the future value equation. So we have 1,500, the I percent is 1.51 and then N is going to be 28. Now, if we go to the reference handbook at the end of this section here, we have these tables. We have I is equal to 1.5%, but we don't have N is equal to 28, okay? We can interpolate between 25 and 30, but that might take us more time. Instead, we can use the tables that are on the first page of this section. So if we go here, if you guys remember, we, are use, we use this symbol here. So we can use this equation to solve for the symbol. So let's do that. Now, if you plug in these numbers in your calculator, you should get 51,000. $800. Now, if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be C. Now, if you guys like this video and you are currently preparing for your FE exam, make sure to check out our courses that has helped hundreds of students pass the FE exam. And before you go, make sure to check out this playlist here that has over 90 FE problems that's going to help you with your FE preparation. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you on the next video. A la prochaine. Everybody now.